What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr Wargames and today I am bringing you the test and combo video for the Sword Soul Small World Profile I showed you all the other day. So, quite straight, simple and forward, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe. If you continue to get the Sword Soul content above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will continue to bring you different variants, even more duels and of course test hands. The reason the small world variant of this deck is so good is it gives direct lines into the most strongest hand trap of the format in something like Draw and Lockbird, a board breaker in the form of a kaiju, as well as a starter or extender for either of your tenies or sword soul plays. So, with all of that out of the way, we're going to do two test hands going first, two going second to show you exactly what this deck can do, starting with one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Not the greatest, but not the worst. As long as you've got access to a Sword Soul starter, and which we do in the form of Ecclesia, which is why you max out on this. And then of course you've got additional worms in the hand or basically general plays to consist on the board, then you're in a very good spot. So we'll start off by special summoning down the Ashuna. You're then going to link this off and go into a Monk. This is going to guarantee you've got a non-effect on the board, set, ready to go, so that all of your plays for your tenies are now active. Um, if you want to as well, because we've got this non-effect and we don't try an effect monster, you can also special summon down the Vishuda. The reason for doing this is it will guarantee you a synchro play later on, and it does mean you've got levels you can adapt as well. We're then going to now normal summon down the Ecclesia, and then we're going to use this effect to tag out and go into a tenny. Now, if you're worried about Droll, it's not really that big of an issue with this particular hand because you can actually still go through um, the Mo Yi route. Now, Mo Yi will give you that random draw. You'll get the search off of um, Qi Zhao, and the chances are that search off of Qi Zhao is either going to go for a long one or you're going to be going for a blackout. So it depends if you want to have back row protection or front row protection. Uh, so we're actually going to go into Mo Yi for that random draw. You could play it a little bit differently, like if you didn't want to go for long one, you could actually go for Tyre. Tyre could then um, banish the Ashuna, because keep in mind you've got this one in the hand later on anyway. And then that would let you get Mo Yi back, or you could Foolish Barrel the Mo Yi, bring Mo Yi back, use this effect, reveal this, and you'd get basically an additional level 8 to the board. So we're going to be going for uh, a level eight, two level 8s and a 10, ideally, on the end of this. So shuffling this up, we're then going to use Moe's effect to reveal the Ashuna and then spawn her respective token. We're then going to synchro the Moe plus the uh, token, and of course we are going to go into Qi Zhao. Then use Qi Zhao, chain link one, Moe, chain link two. So we'll shuffle this up to get that random draw. Uh, so we draw one, and then we're going to be using the effect of Qi Zhao to search you out. Now it's at this point that your opponent can now drop draw on you. Um, it shouldn't really matter by the point you do this because you're going to be going for long one. Uh, you've also got access to get the uh, Adhara from the deck, and the Adhara will let you add back materials as well. So you're in a very good position for this one. So we're going to shuffle this up again. Um, our hand's still in a very good position, so we've still got the ability of activating the long one. The long one can then discard any of the Shafana or the Ashuna. I would personally keep the Shafana. Um, actually, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Let's keep the Ashuna. Because by putting the Shafana in the graveyard, it means if they forget about the Shafana effect and they try and kill Monk, you can then actually Shafana and bring it back, which is pretty cool. Uh, so long one's going to summon. Long one is going to spawn his respective token. There we go. And then you're going to sync in for a 10. Now, the only issue with going to sync for a 10 this way is you don't have any light or dark, which means you can't actually go into Chaos Angel, uh, which means your best option is going to be Baron, which isn't the end of the world. It's still a very good card to be going for. Of course, remember to activate the long one effect to burn your opponent for 1200. That already puts them on the back foot. Um, if you were, if you wanted an additional draw and you weren't under Draw and Lockbird and you didn't really worry about Nibiru, then you could actually make this and go into, or instead of using Baron, you actually go into your Sovereign. And in doing so, what that would allow you to do is when you make a Synchro level eight in a minute with the uh, Ashuna and then Hara and Vishuda, then you actually get the ability to draw an additional card. It then puts your opponent on more of a ticking clock because there's the possibility of burning your opponent for 2400, but then you don't have that Omni Negate. So you do need to kind of make that sacrifice, but keep it in mind that you do have a, a couple of different options. So going into the Baron, of course, we still control a non-effect monster, so then you want to banish the Ashuna, and this is going to allow you to spawn a Tenny from the deck, and that's where opening up the Vishuda came into play, because we've got a very nice additional extension off the back of that as well. 
You can then sync these two now that you are worm locked and this is going to let you get into a level 8 worm. So going second, of course, is going to be Baxio. Going first, we're going to be going to Draco Berserker. Uh, and then, of course, you can still control a non-effect. You're going to use Adhara. Banish this to add the Ashuna back to the hand. So now, basically, what you've got in your grave set for the next turn is during your opponent's turn, you've got the ability, if you wanted to, like you don't actually need to add the Ashuna back. Like one thing with a bit of hindsight, if you really, really wanted to, is you could actually just keep these as they are. And the reason I would say to do that is past your opponent's turn, you've got a Shafana Protection Pop Revival of Monk in your graveyard. You've then also got, so let's say, let's say we leave it as it is, just so I can show you the example. We'll play for our opponent's turn, right? So we'll use the Omni Negate of Baron, we'll use the Negate off of Qi Zhao, and off of Qi Zhao we're going to banish the Mo Yi. Um, we've then got Berserker, so we would have used his effect, and then we would have used Ash. So they would have had to play through four forms of interruption. And then if they try and kill Monk and they forget about the Shafana, it's technically a fifth, so you're going to cause them a lot of issues. And the reason you would keep the Adhara in the graveyard rather than adding another Ashuna is you would draw for turn, and then what you've got the ability for, because you control a non-effect, is you can banish the Adhara and add back the Mo Yi. Now, keeping in mind that we still control non-effects, you still have the ability to special a Tenyi from the deck, but by doing that, you then still have Fushuda, so you banish and bounce, so now you've pretty much interrupted five of your opponent's plays because by bouncing an opponent's monster or if they have to try and negate it, that gives them an issue as well. Baron could, in theory, technically be used as um, fodder to kind of tag out for a monster during the standby phase and that can, of course, get you into Ecclesia as well. So you've got different options, but I'm keeping Baron on the board just so I can use her effect to try and pop a card because then straight away I've tried to bounce a card, I've tried to pop a card. So if my opponent is activating monster effects, I've got Berserker that can deal with it. I've also got a Chi Zhao that can still deal with it this turn, but then I wouldn't get a search later on. And I've still got the Pop of Baron. And I've still been able to maintain my entire hand. So even if they did all of this and then they still nuked this board and cleared this board during my turn, I still have plays to go with Ashuna, with uh, Mo Yi, and then obviously the Blackout is redundant as it was the draw for turn, but it still gives me a defensive setup for the next play as well. So that would be my advice is to, if you've already got the Ashuna in the hand, there's no real need to add it back. Like if you're only going to be adding a 10 year bat for the follow up the next turn, unless you're going to be adding back his Sword Soul monster, um, you're better off just waiting and then using the Qi Zhao to set up your revival. So, uh, and that really does come in clutch because then if you've got a hand like I had there where I had no Sword Soul follow up, uh, the 10 years would then synergize to give me that Sword Soul follow up. So. Definitely always check. I think this is the one thing about Sword Soul which makes them good, but also quite um, confusing at the same time. Is you've got to, you've got to keep an eye on your banish zone, your graveyard, uh, your hand, your board, everything. So like, it, it, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than some of the more basic decks. Like some decks just don't care about their banish zone. Some decks don't care about their graveyard. Some decks don't care about their extra deck. Deck like this, pretty modernized, cares about everything. So we're going to shuffle up again. We'll do another test stand going first. So that was one without Ringo. So again, you can kind of see that the deck still operates. It's not like Ringo keeps makes the deck turn. Ringo is just an additional option to go, right, okay, I've got earlier protection or I've got earlier strengths and everything else. So our new test stand will be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this is an interesting one off the back of Small World. Now... You kind of want to get a non-effect to the board. With Small World, because we've opened up the light, we actually have direct routes to pretty much anything we want. We can get into a Drawn Lot Bird, we can get into an Ashuna, we can get into an Ecclesia, um, we can even get into a Ringworm. Now, the thing on this one is Long One would need to discard the Blackout, which again is absolutely fine, it's not really a big issue. And then we also have the Foolish Burial of Vessel, so we've got a lot to kind of do here. So we'll activate Small World, we'll reveal the Kaiju in the hand, we're going first, the Kaiju is irrelevant to us right now, uh, so you've got pretty much the ability to, to tag in or go into whatever you want. Now, if I go with the starter of Ecclesia, this is the question, is exactly what do you go for? All of the hands are going to be different, so I, if I'd open up a 10 year, then obviously it makes the life a little bit easier. Uh, the bridge in the middle will just need to be a light, so obviously Thunder, Worm, 33, 21, 16, 26, um, definitely, I think it's like a level 9, level 7, uh, the only thing that matches is the fact that they're both lights, so that's one part of the bridge, and then the final bit, because um, I could get into... I mean, a six isn't really worth it. I'm getting to an eight. Let's go Ringo, just so I can show off the Ringo plays. 
There you go, and there's Ringo. Now, it's not going to be as defensive as I would like it to be, but it will give me uh, a couple of different routes, which is kind of cool. So that's the small rail bridge. You're going to banish both of these, and you're going to add the Ringo to the hand. You're then going to activate the long one, ditching the blackout, summoning itself down, spawning its respective token. Now, because you've got a non-effect on the board, you can special summon down. You can special summon down your Ringo worm. You could activate Vessel if you want to. Now, obviously, if you've been drolled, then it's a little bit different. It just becomes a Fordish Burial, um, and then you adapt your plays accordingly. But in this one, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is you're actually going to use your Dragon plus your um, Long One, and this is going to allow you to go into an 8. So if you're not Droll Locked, like I've said, if you're not Droll Locked, you, if you Droll Locked, you do it a little bit differently. If you are Droll Locked, um, do it another way as well. So over the back of this, your Long One and your Dragon, so long one will burn, your Chi Zhao will give you a direct search. Now keep in mind we haven't normal summoned yet, so you can go direct for a search off of this. I'm going to go for emergence. If you're droll locked, obviously you're not going to get to this point, um, but we're going to be playing as if we're not droll locked. So let's shove this up. Then go to activate the emergence. The emergence will then allow us to search out tire. And the reason that we use the emergence is just to deck fin, and it gives us a sword soul card in the graveyard that I can manipulate levels with as well which can be relevant, which you'll soon see. Uh, I can now activate Cycle because I control a non-effect monster. This is going to allow me to Foolish Burial. So let's send uh, a Shuna and let's add... I mean, it doesn't really make a huge mass of difference of what you're going to get. So let's go for the Adhara. Now, if you want to try and make your place before you tenu lock yourself, so... Oh, well, ten you lock yourself, worm lock yourself. So make sure you're aware of that. So we've still got the dragon in the graveyard that can spawn me a level two worm, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I can also tie. I can use Tyre's effect. Tyre can then banish Emergence. Uh, spawn his respective token. And now I just need to think, do I want to adapt a level? I can make that into a nine, but it doesn't really do anything. I can go into a synchro nine here, which could be quite relevant. Um, yeah, okay. So we'll adapt the level so that I can use tire plus a token. So we use his respective token. Uh, and we're going to go into a nine. So we're going to go into Shen Shen, just because this is going to cause opponents quite a lot of issues, which is pretty cool. Uh, use tire's effect. We'll just foolish burial. What have we got left? So I've still got the Ashuna play which I want to get a level 4 out of, and have we already got Vashuda? I haven't got Vashuda, so let's put Vashuda in the grave. Obviously I could send Moyi as a bit of a follow up as well, it's not an issue. We then use Ringo Worm, that's going to spawn me another level 2 token. The level 2 token, which would be here, I'm going to use with my Chi Zhao. Obviously I could leave Chi Zhao on the board if I want to, but I'm basically just upgrading this to go into Chaos Angel, which will protect my plays. Um, and then obviously we have the ability to da, 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 da. So then use the Ashuna because you can still control the um, long one token the special summon from the deck and the special from the deck will be the Shifana um, Use Adhara. Well, you could actually wait. You don't need to use the Adhara right now. But at least you've got a non affair monster, so use Adhara. Add this back. Sync the two level fours. This will then give you access to a little worm eight. So you can either make a second Chi Zhao for the negate for the follow up, or on this one, you're just going to go Berserker. Because then, obviously, your Chaos Angel was made with just lights. Um, so your synchros are unaffected by your mo opponent's monster's activate effects. Shen Shen is going to banish anything that is sent from the deck. Um, or hand, to, I think it also banishes from the field as well. Always mix these up with um, any card from the field or the grave is banished, so we would lose Shafana, which is fine. Um, lost Chi Zhao as well. Uh, da -da -da, something from the field to the grave is banished. Yeah, okay, cool. So then we still keep the Vashuda, which is absolutely fine. 
So then our end board is still pretty good because then it means that you've got like a nice little mini macro. Now obviously if you don't want this or you didn't want this on the board, then you have the option, option to go Yazi if you're going second, you've got the option to go a little bit different as well. So kind of adapt it as you see fit. So it all comes down to personal preference and, and the only reason you'd make Shen Shen is in specific matchups. Like again, against Super Heavy Samurai, Shen Shen, 100%, definitely putting that in there. Uh, against Pearly, again, definitely putting that in there. Just taking away your opponent's graveyard in this format can be incredibly powerful and cause huge amounts of issues. So now let's go into a test stand going second. So we've been able to kind of show what Small World can do. We've also been able to show what Ringo can do. Um, yes, it depends on how much of a hand you want to burn, how much you want to hold back. I'm just showing you the max potential. It all comes down to the situation, it comes down to the matchup, it comes down to the person and the general player of whether you hold back information, whether you hold back some of your plays, you name it. So after another decent shuffle, getting it reset to go second, our first board breaking option will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Jeez! Okay, well, I mean, we've definitely got roots to board break, which is a good start. Um, when I see a hand like this, I'm definitely starting with a shooter. It just causes so many issues because you put down the shooter. They know that the next play that's going to be made is a monk. And then after that, the shooter's going to attempt to bounce one of the cards they're currently trolling. Now, obviously, if they have a fat stack towers, then it's a little bit different because then if your shooter's not going to be as effective and you're going to be trying to build your board with um, literally the hand you have. So what you want to do here is... Again, like I said, you adapt this depending on the matchup and what, what's kind of in front of you. But being able to go Vashuda into Monk, banish the Vashuda to try and bounce one of your opponent's cards. So that's one, one form of interruption you've tried to deal with. Now, if your opponent's not got anything fretful on the board, then you don't need to do this as early. This is just one of the ones to kind of try and bait out a card, pull out a card, and then continue to make your plays. I would then personally um, special summon the Adhara and special summon the Ringo Worm, because you control a non-effect. Now, obviously, the reason you would do in, be doing that is because if your opponent does stop your Moe, you still need ways of being able to synchro play or being ways to kind of build up. You could obviously spawn down the Shafana, um, and the reason you would do that is if they stopped your Moe, so you'd go Shafana rather than the Adhara and special summon this down. You're still kind of utilizing the plays you have, so keep that in mind. Uh, as long as you keep a Tenyi in the hand or a Worm in the hand, you're in good spirit. So <laughs> activate Moe, reveal Shafana, um, spawn the respective token. And now you're in a very good position because you're able to then go, okay, cool. Token, Moe. Um, you could go Cheese if you want to, to get that direct search. Uh, I'm actually going to go Baxia. Purely because I can go, um, actually no, Baxia is a bit of a waste there. I wouldn't use Baxia. Because then I'm only going to get one spin. So let's go Chi Jai instead. Go chaining one, chaining two. Um, shuffle this up. Did I search? I don't think I searched. Doesn't matter. So we draw one. Uh, a little bit late, but okay. Uh, activate Chi Jiao. If I'm worried about draw, you go directly for long one. If you're not worried about draw, then I would personally go emergence so that I can fill up the grave, search out long one. So Also, keep in mind, emergence can tell you to search out any worm. Um, but I don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, and then what you want to do here is you want to sync these two together. Um, I'm going to upgrade straight into a Baron because then Baron protects all my plays going forward, depending on what they have on the board. Uh, and then I can use Baron's effect to pop one opponent's card, so that then means that we've dealt with two cards. Um, obviously, if you can whip all your... Um, if you can get your board down to a state where your opponent still controls more monsters than you, then of course you can special summon Ecclesia, bounce her out, go into Tyre and everything else from that point on. But we're not going to be using it as if we have that. Uh, we're going to have to do it a little bit differently. So we'll use Long One. We'll discard the Shafana, summon itself down, spawn out the um, occurring token, which is absolutely fine. And then on this one, um, I'm actually going to use the token plus long one, and we're actually going to go into Chen Ying. And the reason you're going to do that is because long one will burn your opponent for 1,200. You're then going to be able to banish the Ringo Worm. There we go. Um, and then that will then allow you to use Chen Ying's effect. That will then allow you to banish one card your opponent controls. You've cleared off three of your opponent's cards, 
Plus, he's definitely up by 200 and your opponents are reduced by 200. So again, you're still in a very good position. Now, you obviously, you can do that a little bit differently. You could go into um, your other Supreme and make it work that way. Entirely up to you. Um, then, of course, you've already used the effect of Baron. So you, if you were to link these into Monk and then discard to bring back your Chi Zhao, the obviously you'd lose the activated effects of these couldn't then activate their effects but the continuous this is a continuous um and then this one is that on top of that as well if you were to just link these into a if you were to just to go into a shaman even without activating effect if your opponent has more monsters than you that's when your Ecclesia can come into play and you could have done it a little bit earlier when you would have ended up with two monsters on the board and then still continued to make the plays if you needed to push that final bit and you're not worried about the Omni Negate of Baron, then of course you can then discard a card, bring back your Chi. There you go. And then you've got your battle phase of, you know, this is going to be buffed by 200 at the very least. Everything's going to be down by 200. So you've got 3k, 3k, um, 28, and then 16. So again, you read the board state. You then adapt to what you feel is necessary. If you need to protect more, you keep Baron on the board. If not, then you do it another way around. And that's just the way you have how you can pick a board apart. So that was removing three cards, all in different ma manners. So one was a bounce, one was a banish, one was a... Um, so it was a bounce, banish, and destroy. So. Okay, so now we're going to shuffle out and do our final test. And now again, you're burning through your entire hands. It is just part and part of it. Um, if you are worried about hand resource, and it's more so hand resource going first, then you hold back stuff. And the side deck is where it comes into specific matchups for like games twos and threes. I wouldn't say, you know, like main deck Dark Rulers or main deck Santa Claus is or anything like that. Um, if you're not guaranteed to be going up against Pearly, if you're not guaranteed to be going up against certain matchups, it just is a bit redundant. So our final test stand will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, again, not a bad hand. It really comes down to what your opponent has. Now, ultimately, we don't really have direct route to a, uh, a board breaker. If we did have Small World, we would have a direct route to a Kaiju, which is definitely interesting. But from this point, it's entirely up to you on where you kind of want to take it. Now, you can leave this in your hand or you can get it to the graveyard. The reason, or the only reason I would special summon it and then turn it into Monk is so that I guarantee I've got a non-effect on the board, my Heavenly Dragon Cycle is active, um, and I still have loads more to kind of reveal and do everything I need to with as well. So we can activate Emergence. Emergence will then allow us to search out. Now on this one, I'm gonna go for Mo Yi. I could go for Tyre, and the reason you'd go for Tyre is you can banish Emergence to then adapt the level, and that would give you access to Yazi. Um, <coughs> might actually be the better route, to be honest. Let's go to Yazi route instead. So Tyre, I suppose it shows you something a little bit different as well. Now if you are worried, like if your opponent tries to hit this with a hand trap or something, as long as it targets, you can then tag it out with circle, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it will then allow you to still spawn the token, still keep the token, and then you can tag this out for a Moe, and then you don't care that its effects negated, um, because you're still going to be able to produce. So we'll use Tyre's effect, we'll banish the emergence, we'll spawn its respective token, we'll make it a level 3 so that I can then sync these two together. And go into a Yuzzy. Uh, Tide Effect will then trigger to allow me to Foolish Burial. Now I've got a Shafana. I'm going to send the Shooter. I mean, it doesn't make much of a difference because I've got the ability to Foolish Burial with Vessel anyway. So I've got the set to go with everything I need to. We can then use Yazi's effect, it will pop itself on one of our opponent's cards. So there you go, that's a one for one trade. Yazi's effect will then trigger to allow you to special summon Moyi. Moe's effect on summon will then trigger, revealing the long one. Spawn in the respective token. You can then use Moe plus herself or the token to go into Chi Zhao. Now, again, if you want to be able to spin more cards back, you've got Bax here as an option. We're going to go chaining one, chaining two. So we're going to draw one and then we're going to search one. Now, I've already gone through Emergence. I've already gone through, I've got the long ones. So I'm probably going to go, because I'm going aggressive, I'm going Summit. Um, or do I banish the blackout? Um, oh, very good question. Do I banish blackout instead? I don't think it makes much of a difference, to be honest. I could banish the blackout, but 
No, we'll leave it as if. If I need to, if I if I change it for the blackout, I can change it for the blackout. It's not in the, the world. Uh, I'm not locked on anything yet, so we'll banish the Vishuda. We'll bounce one of our opponent's cards. Uh, we can then activate the cycle. Whenever the cycle, I'm going to <clears throat> send the Ashuna. Add horror. There we go. I can now special summon down Ringo. Link Ringo with Chi and go into. Baron, if you're worried, if not, Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel will banish one card. Your opponent controls. <clears throat> so that's three cards cleared already. Quite nice. And we haven't even used Long One yet. Mental. Um, I've got the Summit, so I can bring back any of my cards from the graveyard. Because control is Synchro. So let's use uh, Long One. Ditch at Horror. Summon itself and its respective token. Um... Again, I'm going aggressive, so Synchro into Chen Ying. Burn your opponent for 1200. You can then use. Um, I want to use a Tara first, or I want to Tenny lock myself first. Does it make a big difference? Not really. Um, Ashuna will then go and summon out. Doesn't really make much of a difference, really. The shooter. That will then, of course, trigger Chen Ying. So then you'll banish another card. One from their grave, one from their field. Um, how far do we want to go on this one? I mean, like, ultimately... Uh, I mean, 11-12 would be pretty funny. Um... If you tag out the monk, you get no effect monster, but you get a effect monster to the board. So let's use Adhara's effect first. Not that it makes much of a difference. Add that back. Do that. Uh, worm locked. Could have used Ringo. <clears throat> I don't think Ringo's really going to do anything for me. Uh, I could go like double aggression actually, which is pretty funny. So, try and get my head straight on this one. Ringo can spawn the token. So I can get into a six, which is fine. So you can go cycle, tag out, monk. Go into. Um, oh, I suppose it doesn't matter. Especially like the Adhara. Just sync these two together. These can then go into Berserker. Then you've just got a fat stack on Berserker. I can then Summit. Bring back Shizhou. Still have these two in the hand. And then just go absolute ham. So 3k, take out two monsters, fat stack, and I've banished three cards, Chaos Angel, and then Chi Zhao. And then all of these um, have the ability that they're unaffected. So really nice kind of boss power. This is what I love about the deck. Like, yes, it's not the number one deck around. I know a lot of people are quite purist on this as well. And it's like, oh, I don't want to play Ringo Worm. And uh, some people don't even want to play Chaos Angel. Absolutely fine. That's what I love about the deck. It does have flexibility. It does have adaptability. It can be played however the individual user sees fit. But this is just to show you what can happen with Small World. It's also to show you what can happen with the deck in general, how it can adapt its plays, um, how it can kind of play around certain hand traps depending on what the rest of the hand is and that's why I feel the deck is decent for this format is that it does have flexibility um, and it does have very good matchups against the right matchups and um, or against the right decks and a lot of people have forgotten what Sword Salt is that Sword Salt even exists so um, they will definitely get caught out as well. Anyway, I hope this video has been informative. I hope you have shown you a couple of different angles and different routes that the deck can take. If you have any questions at all, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.